All right, as I said in the riff, 95% of illegals stay in the country. The question is, what can the GOP do about this uh, deplorable situation? Let's bring in Senator Eric Schmidt. He was former attorney general of the great state of Missouri. Senator Schmidt, as always, sir, Happy New Year. So you were on a letter with a bunch of your colleagues uh, to John Barrasso. I talked to uh, Mr. Barrasso today. You are going to have a Republican conference meeting tomorrow. What do you want to come up with, Senator Schmidt, on this uh, illegal immigration disaster? Well, there have been negotiations about what sort of language changes you know, could take place. I'm more skeptical probably than many of my Republican colleagues that no matter what language change you have here, you have an administration that's just not interested in enforcing the law. They have the tools in place right now to secure our border. They don't want to do it. On day one, they reversed all the things that were working under President Trump, remained in Mexico, Title 42. In fact, when I was Attorney General, we talked, when, and when I was in that role, we pushed back, won some court battles. We had to go back into court to enforce those judgments. It's not in their DNA. This is an open borders crowd. Uh, this is exactly what they want. And so, I'm, you know, for me, I'm very skeptical of some sort of border deal that just unlocked the Ukraine money, which I think is what the Democrats really want. You know, Senator Schmidt, the um, question I have is what might Joe Biden give up if you had a serious negotiation about fixing the border? And I think that's part of your skepticism. What, um, you know, Mr. Langford's up working on this and Barrasso and a lot of smart guys, but what, what would Biden really give up? What do you think? Well, my concern here is that he's, you know, Joe Biden seeing the polling and may want to give lip service to the issue because he understands now that he's completely lost the American people on this. 75% of Americans now, I think it's even higher than that, believe that we have a real crisis at the southern border. I think they tried to ignore it, but all the while, this is part of their game plan. This White House is filled, Larry, with sort of these Ivy League grads who've written these white papers on right. the benefits of open borders. They view themselves as global citizens, not really as Americans. So if you take that, if you understand what their ethos is, right, you understand why we're at where we're at, Well, we have 8 million people who've come here illegally. Those numbers are kind of mind-boggling. It's hard to put it in perspective, but just think about this. The national championship game last night was in the stadium there in Houston. It filled not just, if you, if you added up all the illegals since uh, Joe Biden came in office, it wouldn't be 10 of those stadiums. It wouldn't be 50 of those stadiums. It wouldn't be 100 of those stadiums. It'd be 117 of those stadiums mm. packed with people mm. who've come here illegally. Mm. They're not doing anything about it. Nothing's going to change here. And uh, I just think we ought to take them at their word. They came in saying this is what they're going to do. It's not in their DNA to have a secure border. So I think we ought to be very, very skeptical in any of these real discussions. And by the way, Mayorkas himself, the secretary who charged with enforcing law doesn't want to do it didn't want to you know enforce remain in mexico was in place title 42 and also this parole process larry i think it's important for the audience to understand these are supposed to be individual determinations on asylum or this parole process and they're making it in huge classifications that's illegal right now so if you actually enforce the law as we have it mm. we could have a secure border so some sort of language change i'm not sure that's going to change the reality on the ground and I know, Senator Schmidt, you're a big fan of Bidenomics. And we're going to put up on the full screen a recent poll. Um, what's your financial state? 45% think they're worse off, 23 think they're better off, and 29 about the same. So almost half of those polled think they're worse off to Bidenomics. What do you make of that one? Yeah, you trust the people, right? They know it. Uh, all this nonsense about a slogan to try to convince people they're doing better than they really are with Bidenomics has failed miserably. I think they've stopped calling it Bidenomics. I don't know what they're doing. But the truth is, the average family out there is paying over $10,000 more a year for the same stuff that they were paying for just a few years ago. People feel it, they know there's the, you've got this inflation issue that's not going away. And as you know, Larry, inflation's cumulative, right? Mm -hmm. This has happened now over three years. Wages have not kept up with rising costs. And the truth is, when you spend trillions and trillions of dollars you don't have, like here in Washington, and what Joe Biden wants to spend another seven trillion, and you declare war on domestic energy production, the cost of everything goes up. The supply chain costs go up everywhere. And that's what people are feeling. Every time that feeling that you mentioned in that polling is, is validated when they go to the grocery store. 
you know, moms and dads know this. They're buying snacks for their kids. They know this. When you, you know, go to the gas pump, they know this. And so I think when the Biden administration says, don't believe what your eyes are telling you, uh, Americans are calling BS on it. So Michelle Obama, you know, speaking of politics, Michelle Obama said she's terrified at the top, uh, increasing uh, probability that uh, Donald Trump will be reelected. Terrified. Imagine that. Grown woman terrified. Somebody's got to help her out. Well, that, I'm sure in that, that mansion in uh, Martha's Vineyard there where they're so worried about climate change, oh. that's the same sort of fear they have about, <laughs> about yeah. Donald Trump coming back into office. Yeah. All right. Senator Eric Schmidt, Missouri. Best of the best.